Item 4 in the order paper, the adjournment. The proposer of the topic will have 15 minutes, and all other speakers will have approximately four minutes. And I call Mr. Peter Weir. Mr. Weir. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I suspect the topic of today's adjournment debate which is one that will find a fair degree of consensus around the chamber, but I think all of us approach this with a certain level of, of um, mixed emotion. Why do I say that? Uh, because on the one hand, I would first of all like to express gratitude that the Business Committee have, have allowed this to be selected today uh, on what is, I, I suppose, the closest opportunity we've had to the 10th anniversary of the disappearance of, of Lisa Dorian. Can also, I think, commend uh, the Justice Minister. I suppose he can take advantage of a, a commendation whenever he, he gets it. It's, it's rare enough in this House, uh, and especially for myself in that regard, um, who has been very generous in helping to facilitate this, uh, given the fact that it is largely an operational matter. And so I also appreciate and I think understand uh, that because of the nature of that, uh, while it will not in any way dampen the, the fervour which the Minister will speak on this subject, I appreciate that by definition it will mean that it will limit the scope of any remarks that he can make on the subject. I think that is understood by all those involved. But I say very much a, a mixed feeling because it is also the case that on at least two grounds it is in many ways a shame that we have to have this debate. It is a shame on the grounds that, that ten years on from the disappearance of Lisa Dorian this case remains unresolved. But above all it is a shame that this matter needs to be debated at all because the disappearance and um, assumed murder of Lisa Dorian is a terrible tragedy which should never have been inflicted on the Dorian family. It is, as I said, just over 10 years uh, since Lisa disappeared. Lisa should be with us today. Uh, if Lisa Dorian was alive today, she would be 35. At the time of her disappearance, she was uh, 25. She was a, a, a bubbly girl who grew up in a very loving family in Conlig, and I suppose particularly today our thoughts are most with her family, her father John, her mother Patricia, and her sisters Joanne, Michelle, and Kira. And indeed, it's very noticeable that, that um, and very poignant um, from a period shortly after her disappearance that her, and should be a solitary reminder to us, that her father said that one of the most difficult things he ever had to do in his life was to tell Lisa's then eight-year-old sister, Kira that her sister wasn't coming back, that her sister was dead. That is something which no father should have to, should have to face. As with all of us, uh, Lisa made mistakes in life. All of us have been in that position, and she was particularly prey in her last few years to evil people uh, who were pumping out a criminal actions, uh, and indeed, um, in terms of particularly the, on the issue of drugs. But she was somebody also who had actually taken very active steps to try and sort out her life. One of the great tragedies um, of the Lisa Dorian case was that she, at the time of her death she had very recently inherited, or sorry, had received compensation uh, for injuries of a significant amount that would have enabled her, and indeed her plans were to start a new life uh, in Spain or the Canaries, uh, opening up a, a business there. Unfortunately, her life was cut short before she had that opportunity. Lisa Dorian uh, disappeared in the early hours of the 20th of February 2005. She had been attending a party in a, a caravan in Ballyhalbert. Um, and I suppose what is directly known about, uh, about the disappearance of Lisa Dorian was in the early hours of the morning, she got a phone call on her mobile, left the caravan clearly to meet someone. Uh, the assumption obviously is that it was uh, that the people that she met were those who led directly to her death. And whereas there's been, I suppose, a certain level of speculation uh, that she was attacked, beaten up, killed, and then dumped and buried somewhere, unfortunately, one of the major problems is that, that what we are left with is a certain level of, of speculation. Since, the, um, since her disappearance, there have been, at times, many false trails and false hopes. Uh, at times, there have been people who have been highlighted as suspects, uh, particularly some coming from a loyalist paramilitary background. Um, but I think for the family in particular, what is less significant for them is who carried this out, but more the central question of where Lisa is today. And that is what, they need to, what people need to focus on. 
We have a situation in which I would praise the work of the police um, in this case. Uh, over the last 10 years, there have been, uh, at various stages, eight arrests, none of which ultimately led to anybody being charged. There have been 275 searches, and indeed at various stages, intelligence would have suggested either in particular locations in County Down or even at sea that, that where Lisa's body had been dumped. It is sad to say that, that 10 years on, that body has still not been found. And the police, to be fair to them, have interviewed, I believe, in and around about 4,000 people in connection with this case. There has been a very proactive approach taken by the police who deserve our, our praise. But 10 years on, the Dorian family still do not have closure. I think for any of us in this house, and I'm sure it appears to, it has been the case for most of us, have lost a, a, a close relative. A lot of us have lost a mother or a father. And we all know the heartache that that creates. But then to lose a child is something which is of a much more uh, poignant and sad nature, because it goes very much against the, the order of things. It is very difficult for any of us imagine, to imagine a situation in which not simply a child has been lost, but the family does not even have the opportunity to bury that child, to give it a Christian burial, uh, to be able to have a point at which they can at least grieve, a moment which they can grieve, a location either by way of a, a grave or an urn which they can actually look at and realize that at least is the last remains of, of, of Lisa Dorian. That is something which has been denied to the Dorian family for far too long. We have seen a situation in which uh, the Dorian family have been very active in trying to ensure that the name of Lisa Dorian is kept alive and the issue is kept alive through a, a number of things, a number of initiatives, be it through the uh, Blue Ribbon campaign to remember Lisa, be it through a range of debates, balloon releases, uh, services in their, in their local church. All of these have been to highlight this. But despite the good work of the police, there's been one thing missing, which is that those who know what happened to Lisa have not come forward. This most recent campaign um, to mark the 10th anniversary uh, has been boosted not simply by the, the family who have given uh, a reward of £10,000, but there's a reward of £5,000 through Crime Stoppers for information leading to the whereabouts of, of Lisa. You know, in many ways, it, whether someone uh, who may well uh, have some level of fear, that there is an opportunity at least then for them to come forward, at the very least to give that information uh, confidentially. What the family seek above all else is knowledge of the whereabouts of Lisa's body. If I, if I can quote her father, John, the justice then can take care of itself afterwards, but we would like to find Lisa to give her a Christian burial. All they have to do is listen to their conscience. Whether it is to their conscience, whether it is a desire to get some of the reward money, the motivation of people, I, I don't think we particularly care about. But let us send out today a clear signal to people. Let us bring some level of peace and closure to the Dorian family and send out a signal that this assembly has not forgotten Lisa and there is justice to be done for the Dorian family. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Call Mr. Leslie Cree. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And I rise again to support the sentiments of my North Down colleagues to bring public attention to the fact that this cruel crime committed, and it's hard to believe, 10 years ago remains unresolved. I applaud the local police who have joined with Lisa's parents, Patricia, John, and her sisters, Joanne, Michelle, and Kira in renewed investigation to find out what happened to their loved one when she disappeared without trace on the 28th of February 2005. Mr Deputy Speaker, I use this opportunity as a political representative to appeal to the general public to let the police know anything they feel may help to complete the missing links of what happened on that fateful day. I cannot begin to imagine what the family must go through every day of their lives, knowing that Lisa is out there somewhere and they cannot grieve or find rest until they find her remains. Like all victims of her troubles, it is the family that is left to suffer in the not knowing place of such crimes. Her memory cannot be led to rest until she's found 
or someone comes forward with substantial evidence that will satisfy police investigations. Until this happens, the Dorian family cannot find closure. I'm pleased to notice that extensive press coverage has been produced, which gives detailed accounts to date of police evidence obtained by the CS Crime Branch. Detective and Chief Inspector Justin Galloway has said, and I quote, the initial response to the 10th anniversary appeal for information about Lisa's disappearance and murder has been encouraging, both in terms of the volume of calls we've received and the quality of the information being provided. It shows that people care and there is information in the community which could make a crucial impact. He advises, and again I quote, that on PSNI social media platforms alone, 50,000 people read the renewed appeals. It's important that this message is delivered by as many people as possible to try and bring to book the perpetrators of this heinous crime. Somewhere out there knows what happened, and I appeal to the conscience of those who do to come forward and help put closure to the Dorian family's pain. Mr Deputy Speaker, in closing, can I take this opportunity, both as a resident of North Down and a public representative, to reinforce my previous call for those with information to contact the police at the incident room in Newton Arts or anonymously through Crime Stoppers. Thank you. Call Mr. Stephen Farry. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Deputy Speaker. Can I first of all, uh, thank uh, my colleague, Mr. Weir, uh, for. Uh, arranging uh, this uh, German debate, uh, in particular to, to coincide with the, the 10th anniversary of the very sad disappearance of Lisa Dorian, and also to echo the comments that have been made by both of the previous speakers in this regard, and, and no doubt to share the comments that, that will be made by others uh, during the course of this uh, debate uh, as well. Obviously, our, our thoughts are very much uh, with the, the family of Lisa Dorian, who have gone through a tremendously difficult uh, decade with um, a huge degree uh, of dignity, uh, but have also been very tenacious uh, in ensuring that they have kept um, the case of Lisa Dorian very much uh, in the public eye and have always uh, sought and continued to, 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 to seek um, truth uh, and, and, and following from that in due course, hopefully, justice in relation to her, to, to her disappearance and what is sadly inevitably a, a death that we, are, that we are talking about. There are probably two particular points that I want to, to make, uh, building upon the comments that have been made uh, to date. The first one is, is just to, to reinforce the point that there are people out there who know fully what happened to Lisa Dorian and where her remains lie today. And hopefully, with the passage of time uh, over that 10-year period, the perspective and attitudes that maybe pertained in the eyes and, and on the head of someone 10 years ago have moved on significantly, and that there are more, one or more people today who are th out there with the, this case very much preying on their conscience. And uh, they have many different avenues through which they can make that information known. And in doing that, not only will they give a huge degree of comfort uh, to Lisa Dorian themselves, but I would also suggest that they um, would benefit from getting um, what is no doubt a, a very uh, important thing weighing on their conscience um, in the proper light and ease, ease their own burden, um, even inclu including if that person is indeed a perpetrator to the, the case. So hopefully over time, um, the, the, the circumstances change in the, in, the, in the heads of those with the information that would actually lead to the information coming, coming to light. Others have made known the different avenues that do exist uh, in relation to information coming to light. I would also perhaps maybe make a further point in that uh, Lisa Dorian is perhaps as much uh, one of the disappeared uh, as the victims of Republican violence. Um, that, that are more traditionally associated with the concept of the disappeared. We've had uh, many debates in this House uh, over the past uh, uh, number of years in relation uh, to the disappeared and have talked about the importance uh, of information leading to the recovery of remain, remains. And there has been some successes in that regard and it has brought a, a degree, I stress a degree of closure uh, to many of the families who have been suffering uh, for many years. 
Sadly, the remit of the Independent Commission for the Location of Victims' Remains is prescribed uh, by law and indeed uh, by treaty, uh, co only covering the period up to 1998. But it may be one possible route is to encourage both the British and Irish governments to consider extending the remit of that commission to include the case, the case of Lisa Dorian, to provide one more mechanism uh, by which information leading to the recovery of the, 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 uh, the remains could be uh, pursued. That never takes justice itself off the table, but as Mr Weir has pointed out, there are two different aspects here. One is the closure in relation to the location of the remains, and the second one in due course is that of justice. Thank you. Call Mr Alex East. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, Lisa Dorian was 25 and was from Bangor and went missing in the early hours of February the 28th, 2005 after attending a party at a caravan site in the seaside town of Bally Halbert. She had recently separated from her boyfriend of four years and was hanging about with a new crowd. It is widely believed she was abducted and murdered by criminal elements with possible paramilitary links. Her body has yet to be found, but police believe she was murdered. The investigation into Lisa's disappearance and murder has been substantial. As my colleague has already uh, said, um, the identification of more than 4,000 witnesses has taken place. They have taken um, statements from 571 people. There have been 275 searches, 194 of them in caravans and outbuildings. There have been eight arrests on suspicion of murder and a number of other unrelated drug offences. Despite extensive land and sea searches, her body has never been found. Police have made several arrests, but no one has ever been charged with her murder. The Dorian family have tried a number of initiatives since she went missing, including linking up with Snow Patrol singer Gary Lightbody and releasing a short film at local cinemas. A £10,000 reward, as already mentioned, was also offered by the family for information leading to the recovery of Lisa's body. Police and the family of Lisa Dorian have launched a renewed appeal for information about the missing Bangor woman in the wake of the 10th anniversary of her disappearance. The anniversary appeal coincides with a new reward of up to £5,000 from the independent charity Crime Stoppers and an outdoor advertising campaign in Bangor and parts of Greater Belfast to try and promote the campaign. A video appeal made by Lisa's family and the police will be shown in a number of cinemas over the coming weeks, as well as being available to view online at the PSNI website, YouTube and Lisa's website. A social media campaign, Let's Find Lisa, is also being started to help enlist community support for this 10th anniversary appeal. Several cinemas have also kindly agreed to show Lisa's appeal video in their premises over the coming weeks. Police and the Dorian family gratefully acknowledge the cooperation and generosity of these organisations in showing the video appeal free of charge. There are individuals who have knowledge of how she died and where they have hidden her body. By holding on to these secrets, they prolong a grieving family's agony. The family have received a number of confidential messages, however. The request for the conclusive piece of information still continues. Inf investigations into the disappearance of Lisa are still ongoing. The investigation will not be concluded until Lisa's body is found. Those individuals who harbour the secrets, which could free the Dor Dorian family from their living nightmare, should take no comfort from the passage of time. I would ask them to do the right thing and talk to the police. If anyone has information, please contact Crime Stoppers immediately. The smallest details of information could be vital in the link to catching those responsibility and leading to the whereabouts of Lisa's body and give the Dorian family the closure that they deserve. Thank you. Call Mr Gordon Dunn. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and I too uh, welcome this opportunity to further this debate and commend my colleague Peter Weir for bringing this motion tonight. There is no doubt Saturday the 28th of February 2005 is one of the darkest days in the lives of the Dorian family and one which will never be forgotten. It was a night Lisa never returned from a night out in Bally Halbert. Sadly, Lisa has not been since, seen since that fateful night and we all share in their pain today. However, our pain pales into insignificance compared to that of the Dorian family, who have had to live with that empty chair for over 10 years since Lisa's disappearance. It is important that we continue to raise the awareness of this campaign 
As the family have recently stated, someone out there knows something about the disappearance of Lisa. I pay tribute to the bravery and courage of the Nadorian family who have shown ever since the day of Lisa's disappearance that, that, that bravery and courage. Lisa's parents, John, who I have known for a number of years, and Patricia, along with sisters Joanne, Michelle, and Kira, have shown incredible bravery and determination and a real testament to Lisa. As already has been said, the family want closure and the right for a family Christian funeral. Justice, as they've said, can wait. There has been a considerable amount of police input into this investigation over the years. For example, through the statements from 571 people, 275 searches, and so on, with eight arrests. However, given that no one has been brought to justice, I believe there, this needs to continue. The police need to continue their, their efforts and redouble their investigations and do all that they can to help this grief-stricken family in their time of need. I think it is important that the police review all actions taken, all the processes that they've gone through and all their files, and carry out a, a string, stringent review of the evidence and the statements to date. I have no doubt they will continue with their campaign. We must salute them in their hour of need, and I would like to reassure them that they have our full support and we continue to remember them in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I will call Mr. Stephen Agnew. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I rise with the picture of Lisa Dorian in front of me and, and the images of her family during the recent appeal. And uh, Lisa was my age, and it's hard not to, 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 to kind of uh, put yourself back to 10 years ago, where was I? And I, like Lisa, was, was partying. I was without responsibility. I didn't have children at that time. Um, and no doubt at times I was irresponsible. Um, but uh, I suppose in my, in, in my own context, I was largely safe. And unfortunately, still in, the society, in this society, at the advantage of, of being a man, being male. And violence against women is still something very much prevalent in our society. And uh, it's still a very much a scourge um, on our society and is all too, too prevalent. And it's so, an issue we still have to deal with, whether it um, be domestic violence um, within the, the privacy of a family home or this violent act that we understand has, has been committed and we've yet to fully, undiscover, uh, fully discover the truth of. Ten years on, and I'm, I'm fortunate to have children of my own, a, a future that was denied to Lisa. Um, and I can only imagine now as a parent how Lisa's family must feel, her parents, John and Patricia, and indeed her sisters, Joanne, Michelle, and Kira. How, how this tragedy has impacted in their life, I can only speculate at, except to say that my sympathy, I would extend my sympathy to them, um, as, as my North Down colleagues have done here today. All I can do, Mr. Deputy Speaker, is echo the appeals that have been made. There are people out there who know that happened, and whether for right, or for reward, they should bring forward that information. Um, if need be, uh, confidentially through Crime Stoppers, to pretend, protect them from any fear of persecution. As has been stated uh, on a number of occasions throughout this debate, um, the family now want to find where Lisa's body is. They want to give her the burial that she deserves. And I would call on those with this information to let their conscience rest, to let this family have peace, and to bring that information forward um, and help this family move on. I'll call Mr. Chris Hazard. Uh, and I a, a welcoming opportunity to, to speak on this. The Germans, if welcome is indeed the, 
the, the term. Um, I, I was just starting university actually when, whenever this occurred, and I remember the the, the blue ribbon appeal. Um, I, I don't know Lisa. I didn't know Lisa. Or I don't know Lisa's family, but it's evident to see when you read the local papers and you stay in touch through the news, the heartbreak that this family ha has endured, and indeed the heartbreak of all that disappeared. And there's been some reference made to um, other other families um, who, 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 who still suffer um, with the terrible heartbreak associated with with such an incident. Like many in our society, Lisa was a young person with her life ahead of her uh, when such a crime was inflicted upon her. Um, and far too often, you know, and certainly coming out of conflict, this is something that many families have had to deal with. So it's heartbreaking for the family, not simply because they have lost their daughter, uh, a daughter they no doubt loved, but the fact that they, you know, they don't have, you know, they don't have that grave or the, the body where they could have the Christian burial, and something, of course, that they they very much want. Um, I apologise, I didn't hear all of what Peter Weir had to say, but I caught the end and the, 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 the talk of to what extent the PSNI have went to, and it's quite clear that they have you know, went to some considerable extent with over 4,000 interviews and massive searches on land and, and sea. But I think that the crux of this real problem is that the wall of silence remains. Um, and despite the fact that somebody somewhere knows something, um, you know, nobody is coming forward to, to, to give the evidence that you know, is very much needed. Uh, I think Stephen Farry touched upon a salient point. Perhaps there is a, you know, there's a role here now for the purview of the, the Commission for the retrieval of the recovery of victims' remains could be extended um, past 1998. I think it could be something that is, uh, is worthwhile. Stephen Agnew's also touched on I think this very important thing here. There is very often the hidden problem of violence against women and conflict and coming out of that. Uh, and it's something we must bear in mind. But really, I just want to echo the calls that other members have made, um, that somebody somewhere knows something, and there's nothing that is too insignificant that can't help in this case, and that if anybody does know that they should come forward uh, and help, because there's a family that is heartbreaking here for 10 years, and unless somebody comes forward, it could be another 10 or 20 years indeed. So thank you very much. Call Mr. Alban McGuinness. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank Mr. Weir for bringing this debate. Uh, I think it's very appropriate and timely, given the 10th anniversary of the disappearance of this young lady, uh, who is now presumed to be dead as a result of murder. Uh, and there seems to be very little doubt that that uh, was her end. Uh, to the uh, Dorian family in particular, to John and Patricia Dorian, uh, I give my party's support and solidarity in their difficult time. Uh, but what I would say to them is this, don't give up, don't give up. And I repeat that again, don't give up. Uh, those uh, who campaigned for the disappeared, who were uh, kidnapped and murdered by Republican terrorists and buried, uh, in unknown graves. Uh, those vict the victims' families did not give up. They didn't give up. They mounted a very successful campaign uh, to uh, uh, try to find out where their remains were and to have those remains returned. It hasn't been completely successful, Mr. Deputy Speaker, but uh, certainly there have been successes. So I say, don't give up. And I think the suggestion by Mr. Farry in relation to the Commission on the Disappeared uh, being extended uh, to this particular incident uh, is a good one. And the reason I say that is this, that uh, under the terms of that particular Commission, information can be given uh, to the Commission in full confidence without any penalty. Uh, and further to that, any evidence which is derived from the, the uh, discovery uh, of the remains of an individual uh, victim, uh, that evidence is not uh, permitted to be used in any uh, criminal proceedings. Uh, and that's important, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And I say why it's important, because it gives a degree of immunity 
to those who may well have been associated with this uh, uh, dreadful uh, disappearance of Lisa Dorian. I think the family, and from what Mr Weir has said and other of his colleagues, I think the family uh, do not seek uh, the uh, uh, prosecution of people in relation to this. Their first uh, desire is the return of the remains, and uh, for them justice is secondary. So I think it is important uh, that uh, an encouragement of that sort be given to those who have an intimate knowledge of what happened and who may well have been involved in the despicable actions that led to her death. So I, I think it's important that we emphasize that today uh, in the hope that you can encourage people uh, to come forward uh, and to give information uh, to the PSNI or indeed to the Commission, as I've already said. Uh, and I would hope that that would be successful. It is so important for a family uh, to find closure uh, in relation to the disappearance and death of a loved one. And I think that all of us in this House, uh, uh, we lend our support to the, uh, uh, to the encouragement that Mr Weir has given uh, to those outside uh, this House who have information Members to bring it, uh, to the PSNI. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I'll, I'll end there, but just simply to say, don't give up. Call the Minister for Justice, Mr. David Ford, to respond. Mr. Ford. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I'm certainly grateful to Peter Weir for bringing this debate to the House today, and I'm personally grateful uh, and appreciate his acknowledgement of the limitations on my role as Minister in this context. But just as I believe it's entirely appropriate that this matter should be debated just shortly after the 10th anniversary of Lisa's disappearance, and a debate in which all six members from North Down have taken part and two representatives of parties not represented in North Down, I believe it's also appropriate that I, as Minister, should respond, even though my role is very limited in this particular area. But it's important that the Dorian family should have the sympathy of the House and the sympathy of the Executive on record today. And our thoughts have to be with her parents, John and Patricia, and her three sisters, as they so movingly and so courageously helped relaunch the appeal that it must have been bringing back in an even more uh, difficult way for them what they have lived with for 10 years as they have dealt with that. Certainly, as Minister, I can commend the good work being done by the police, an issue which has been highlighted by others, and I don't need to repeat the statistics of the numbers of interviews, of the number of uh, potential witnesses traced, you know, of all that's been done around searches. It showed a very significant effort on the part of police. And it is clear also that we've seen a very significant uh, imaginative renewal of the campaign in terms of the work being done around social media, the work being done by the video to be shown in local cinemas, the advertising on billboards and so on. All of that is showing a family facing this difficulty with great courage because of their desire to see that their daughter is given a Christian burial a very good work being done by the police in supporting that. And I understand also that there has been a very significant response to that work over the last couple of weeks, with a number of people coming forward, not just in terms of the number of people who bring information, but indeed de detectives believe that there's been a significant quality to some of that information that's been brought forward. And that must give hope that it will be possible that Lisa's body can be recovered and that her family can have the comfort of giving her the Christian burial that they so clearly crave. Um, I noticed the, you know, the references which Stephen Ferry made first and others have made about the potential for uh, treating Lisa as one of the disappeared and bringing her within the remit of the Commission. That may or may not be possible, but what is absolutely clear is that the campaign which is underway at the moment, involving the family, the police and others, must be given the utmost support, that the, you know, the opportunities must be given in order to bring forward the information which will finally bring closure to that family, 
So whether or not it is possible to make that legislative change, there is much that needs to be done in the interim. And certainly, I would hope that those who know something, because there are people who know a lot which they've never brought forward, and there may be others who know a little which they've never brought forward, will listen to the appeal from the family, will recognise the trauma that they are still subjected to, and will come forward. And if they're unwilling to contact the police directly, there are other agencies, principally obviously the Crime Stoppers charity, but there are other ways in which information could be brought forward to allow the recovery of Lisa's body. Certainly as Justice Minister, I would wish to see justice, but it's clear what the family want most of all. So on that basis, I can say little more about the operational matters which affect the police, but I would urge whoever may have any information whatsoever to come forward and commend Lisa's family for the courage in which they have put forward their case in recent days, as indeed over 10 years, and wish them every sympathy as they deal with their continuing loss. The question is that the Assembly do now adjourn. The Assembly is adjourned.